This week in Nerf, we've got so much news, I can't cram it into an intro. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. So let's get right on into it, because there is a ton to talk about. Let's start with the official first party Nerf news. There are a number of blasters that have been leaked, announced, shared, however you want to put it. Uh, so let's let's talk uh, first about the Ruckus ICS-8. This is one we know the least about. There's been some listings, but no images and some uh, descriptions of it. It's going to be an ICS, which is clip system, internal clip system. And this is one that I thought at first was going to be like the Battle Scout is, is what they make it sound like. But the next ICS blaster we'll talk about makes me question that. And this is something that uh, looks like it may be a smaller Battle Scout, something like that maybe. But should be uh, interesting to see. I don't know if they're really pushing this ICS line. It's interesting, but we don't have a ton in terms of visuals or anything like that to go with. Just like I said, those listings that don't have images yet. So we'll talk more about that one probably when we do have a better idea on it. So let's jump to the next ICS blaster, which is the Shadow ICS 6, which uh, actually Lord Drac got a chance to review and get his hands on and take a first look at which... Uh, it's definitely, I gotta say, pretty cool looking. This is a clear kind of retaliator update. And I really like the way this shell looks, to be quite honest. It looks much better than the Evader to me, but really the more interesting thing uh, in, outside of its aesthetics is the fact that it's an internal magazine. Despite using the term uh, internal clip system, it is an internal magazine that you would load like the Kronos, which is really kind of cool. I mean, it's a little bit of a bummer that you can't just drop whatever magazine you want into it for whatever kind of capacity, but it's an interesting kind of mix up or change up to way the way we've been looking at dart blasters in the last few years. I mean, it's not many internal magazine dart blasters. We've got like the quick 16 and uh, that's the one that first comes to mind when I think about these, but there's not a ton of them. So it's definitely something interesting. And I think a better route to go than say something like the, battle scout style sliding clip that yeah you can top it off but eh, something about it just doesn't seem as aesthetically pleasing as the internal magazine system so that's definitely cool uh like the evader it's got the whole light up system and, and all of that going for it which is fun i'm sure we'll see people put all kinds of different colored wire in there or leds and do all kinds of cool fun stuff with that so that's something we can all look forward to uh that one i will have the video link for you down below because that is where we have really almost any information at all about this blaster is this one was a total surprise this week uh the other ones we've been seeing images of or getting leaks of and things like that. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the next one, which is the holdout real quick on this one. It's just a small Doomlands uh, single shot style blaster, probably similar to a fire strike or something like that. It's not bad looking. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of it. It's already on sale. If you want to go purchase one on Amazon, I have the link down below for that. It's like 10 bucks US. So it's a, it's a nice little fun single shot that kind of mixes up the fire strike look or uh, whatever you want for your single shot style blaster. The other one we want to talk about today is the quad rot which is kind of a mix up between a, a, a crossfire and a fire strike. So you have that four shot smart AR system, but in a smaller size, which honestly I really like. I'm probably going to have to pick up one or two of these because I think it's a really cool idea to put things in a smaller form factor. It still looks relatively nice. It's, it's a zombie strike blaster, so it has a little bit of that kind of jank aesthetic going on, but it does have the functionality that you would expect that you would want out of it and that's pretty cool because the crossfire didn't really get a whole lot of love because it was big for what it did so this putting in a smaller form factor i think is a good move and i think will help it sell a little bit now it, it's going to be a bit long because it's four darts in a row so it may not be the easiest to holster things like that but again i think the idea is on the right the right track for that one 
So excuse me if we are blazing through these, but like I said, there's a fair amount to talk about and something I have not yet seen shared uh, that was somewhat surprising is while browsing through some websites, I happened to stumble on a couple listings for two new lines of Microshot Blasters. We have a Marvel line of Microshots coming out this year, uh, including a Spider-Man, a Captain America, and a, an Iron Man blaster, all of these uh, available through the website that I'll have linked down below. Uh, I want to say it was $60 for a case of six of them. And what's interesting is there were three of one, two of one, and one of one. So not an even distribution. So some may be harder to find than others when they do reach store shelves. So you can expect uh, for six, they'll probably retail around 10 to $15 a piece, higher than the other Microshot lines because they are licensed branded from other companies. You've got Marvel. And the other one is Star Wars. There's going to be a Star Wars line of micro shots, including a uh, Stormtrooper blaster, a Han Solo blaster, and a Ray blaster. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to be quite honest about two new lines of micro shot blasters that uh, have me pretty pretty ant. I love that they are expanding this line. I've said it before. I think this is a great thing for collectors and enthusiasts and everyone to kind of get behind it, have something easy to collect and easier to store than big blasters and things like that. So uh, definitely a fan of this and something to note on that as well is that these are wave one of both of these lines. So assuming these sell well, we should expect to see multiple waves and multiple uh, bunches of them, meaning more and more designs because there's plenty of characters they can work with in both of these franchises. And that is super exciting. So these should be coming out this year, I believe, based on the listings. So go ahead and check those out. And then one more thing to talk about first party news wise is Fortnite. Fortnite and Nerf have come to an agreement to create Fortnite themed Nerf blasters. That is a huge deal and something that will hopefully bring a whole lot of new eyes, new people to the Nerf community because when people get a blaster, they may do a search on it. They may look up things like uh, reviews and they may happen to stumble upon a mod guide or something that shows the community aspect. So if you bring in a potential massive audience in the Fortnite community right now. That is potentially a good number of new people coming into the community and that is a big thumbs up to me. Whether or not you like Fortnite is completely irrelevant uh, in my opinion to this discussion or this topic because it's what these blasters can potentially do for the community, for the hobby. And that's just on top of the fact that we're getting new shells. Uh, I don't expect they will go with the, the super hyper-realistic, like the uh, M16 that's in the game. Uh, but I expect we'll likely see a, a more cartoony version of the SCAR, of the shotgun, the tactical shotgun. Of uh, I could definitely see a grenade launcher or rocket launcher for demolisher missiles. Things like that. And I would personally love to see a variety of the pickaxes in Fortnite done as foam melee versions that I think would just be super cool to see. Uh, so we'll see what happens. These are supposed to come out in 2019, so next year. Definitely, definitely be sharing anything we hear about these. I assume we will start to get some leaks and images and things like that, or teasers rather, from Nerf, just as we've gotten for the Overwatch blasters. So 2019 should be pretty... Uh, pretty stacked for licensed Nerf blasters and hopefully these function well because if they do it would just be fantastic for us. So fingers crossed on that one. But that's going to do it for the first party news. Uh, apologies for the brevity of that but there was so much that I couldn't reasonably talk at length about all these things. So please go click on all the links down below to find out more about each of those items because there is a lot of details and information to explore with all of them. So let's go ahead and move on to some third party news and let's, uh, let's start with Worker. Worker has announced and released a new 42.5 millimeter uh, cage. And this is a metal flywheel cage. And this is news because this is their first cage that has a higher crush rate. They've done wheels in the past. 
that have had higher crush rates, the white and black high crush uh, wheels that we see commonly used in the community have been a big thing, uh, at least in the modding community overseas and whatnot. So now seeing a 42.5 instead of a standard stock crush cage is definitely a great step for worker. I would like to think this is in response to them saying they would listen to the community more, uh, but the shortness between that statement and the release of this has me thinking that this is something they had been working on prior. Regardless, I think it's a welcome addition. If you like worker products, something you could check out. Uh, we do have a good number of 42.5 uh, flywheel cages now available. Uh, this is, I, I, I'm always a fan of metal cages. They sound better, they feel more durable, and they just, they just add something that's really nice to the blaster. So this is something that you can definitely take a look at. They're on sale now. I've got a link to, uh, I believe, the Worker Kit website where I found that first after it was shared online. And uh, they did release some metal wheels to go with it, but I just can't, I can't reasonably suggest trying metal wheels because there's just so much that they have in terms of downsides compared to other, uh, like the Delrin and ABS and other, other material flywheels. But let's talk about another flywheel cage. Let's, let's give you a little bit of a teaser. Just that image. It's a containment crew, aluminum flywheel cage. Can't say more today, but next week we'll have a lot more information for you. Figure since we're talking about flywheel cages, we leave that up there for just a minute. But let's go ahead and jump in. So look out for next week's episode for more information on that. We have something from uh, the Caliber, something for the Caliber, and rather. Uh, Captain Slug has updated the Caliber designs and the Caliburns for sale. Now, a while back, we talked about Devil's Nerf Works. Uh, I don't even know how to put it. Separating Caliber, the magwell that came apart and allowed you to split the blaster in half for easy access of certain parts. Uh, Captain Slug liked that idea so much that he took it and made it an official part he's updated it for all versions of the caliburn that means the regular caliburn the rival caliburn and the mega caliburn all of those have uh detachable magwells now that you can use to either store your blaster more compact and easily or as some people have taken to uh you can now purchase front halves or print out just the front halves of these blasters and have one back end and two or three front ends that you could easily swap out at an event for whichever kind of, of caliber you want to run. And that, that to me is just so entertaining and so interesting that I, I don't know, it's something about it just makes me love it. It's taking the pin design from the CETA and integrating that because it just makes it easier to do. And it's just, it's just so cool to continue to see the uh, innovation and, and iteration on this blast, this platform that is just so loved by the community and is bringing so many people into higher powered blasters. So I think uh, the hope and experiment that, that Captain Slug set out on with this to get more people involved, I think has been a wild success. So if this is interesting to you and you want to take a look at these, I have the link down below, of course. Uh, go get yourself some. I think the files should be updated relatively soon if they are not already, if you just want to print your own. But uh, keep your eyes out for that. So one more thing to talk about today, and that comes to us from Foam Dart Thunder and Monkey Tron Collective. That is Foam Fest 2019. After uh, this year's End War and uh, the convention that was attached to it, there is now going to be a second one hosted by FDT and Monkey Tron Collective. I worded that a little bit strangely. It is not going to be associated to End War if, just for clarity's sake, this is a completely separate thing. So we now have multiple large-scale events each year, and that to me is so cool. Uh, we, now we have something overseas in the UK where this is being held. Uh, it's going to be a part of an FTT stadium event. That's where uh, Foam Dart Thunder hosts events running out of massive stadiums using the in, in, indoor areas 
to play games all throughout the stadium. And that is just so cool. If you haven't seen the footage, you have to go check that out. So having a convention where people can gather and talk and meet creators from that area or anyone that's going and traveling for it and find things to buy or people to connect with, it's just such a good thing and something that has me so excited. Uh, I, I look forward to it. And this is going to be in March, I believe March 9th, uh, right in between Manchester and Liverpool to give you a, a little bit of an idea of geography in terms of where this is being hosted. But just go check this out. All the information will be down below in the event that you can check out. And I'm sure this is going to be a fantastic event because Foam Dart Thunder uh, has always run just some of the coolest stuff and is pushing uh, where Nerf goes. So that is something that you should definitely keep your eyes on. And I'm sure we'll be talking more about this in the future. But let's go ahead and talk about our mod of the week. This week, it comes to us from Epic Whale. This is a brushless Infinis. And there's more going to it than just the brushless Infinis part. Uh, and not only is it brushless, but it also has a speed controller. So in the video that you can check out below, there uh, is him shooting. He has select fire in various different states. Uh, the speed controller changes. You can hear the difference in the wheels spinning. Uh, it has an LED, I believe, to show you which select fire setting you're on. It's utilizing the uh, ultrasonic style cages, like from the Ultra Stripe and things like that. So if that uh, is being utilized for this, it means it may be uh, something that you can be able to do if you want to invest time, though he is selling them as well, I believe. So to me, this is relevant to me because I just released my review on the Infinis and seeing this done, seeing the capabilities of this blaster, and not only does he keep the reloading mechanism, but he also adds a chrono barrel integrated to it to give you those readings. So. There's just a whole lot going on here that I definitely recommend going to check out the uh, the Facebook post with the video and the information and all of that because it is definitely, definitely a cool build. And I'm hoping to see some Infinite Blasters on the field, modified, and uh, having a good time running against them. So let's go ahead and move on to our last thing today, and that is our video of the week. This is just something I couldn't not share, and this is a Nerf loadout fashion show from Captain Xavier. It's just too fun. It's too lighthearted and happy and goofy and just, it just made me smile. And that, I couldn't not share this video. Uh, I'm sure most people have seen it already, but if you haven't, you gotta go watch it. It's just the right kind of goofy and fun that I feel like the people involved just kind of had a thought and they just ran with it. And sometimes those are, the most entertaining things. So definitely go check that video out. It's worth your time. And before we close out here, I just want to say thank you as always to everyone that supports the channel, whether you are a supporter through Patreon, whether you're a subscriber, whether you share or just like the videos or just watch the videos. Thank you to each and every one of you so much. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. I would love to have you be a part of this community. With that said, Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.